vortices of ether. A vortex multiple of uh, a vortex is vortices. So if you wonder what I'm saying. Um, now, most of you are, are familiar with a vortex like a tornado. You can see it like from the top down, a little spiral type of thing. But uh, oh, my cat is helping out. Um, <laughs> but there are other types of vor uh, vortexes. Uh, and, uh, and one of these is called a toroidal vortex. Now, what a toroid is, is basically a donut. Now, some of you may have seen these uh, things that uh, will shoot smoke rings. A smoke ring is actually a toroidal vortex. And what I mean by a toroidal vortex, that means that not only is there a, uh, a spin in the center, now this is, this is basically a cutout uh, drawing, you'll have to excuse me if it's not very good, um, in the center, there's a, a spin, but it's also a downward motion. If you take a donut and spin it inwards on itself, that would be kind of like the motion of the toroidal vortex. But then you also have to have a, uh, a spin that's happening as well on the outside and on the inside. So it's a kind of a complex thing. Here's the thing. There is something that goes beyond a toroidal vortex. Now, you go, it's already pretty complex. But... Uh, uh, Celtic knots are actually probably the best explanation of the, the next step beyond the vortex. That is, you can have a toroidal vortex that is a big toroid, but inside it are these other vortexes as well. Now, that's really complex, and I'll get into that later, but this is supposed to be the, uh, the structure of an atom. In other words, a vortex of ether is what an atom is. Um, so, first of all, I don't know if you've seen the, uh, you know, Ring makers. One of the things that happens, like if you play with, if you play with a toy like this, then one of the things that you'll notice is that for some reason you can shoot a blast of air out of this thing all the way across the room, 25 feet away. Bam! Hits them in the face. Why is that? Well, what's going on is the energy that you have stored inside the the vortex stays in the vortex because of the shape of the vortex. Basically, it's a way of making energy stay in one place uh, by a certain shape. Uh, and so that is why a toroidal vortex is interesting because the regular vortex, well, all the energy just kind of uh, can fall off of it. It, uh, it can be dissipated in, uh, in turbulence. And so that's why, when, for instance, I can blow really hard as I want and nothing will actually, it won't go up on it, but, you know, barely across the room you'll feel it. Whereas with this thing, I can hit you in the face at 25 feet and it'll feel almost like it just came out of the cannon. So, we've established that what an atom is, in other words, what all things are made of, is infinitesimal whirls of prodigious velocity. What this means is that it's spinning so fast, perhaps it's near the speed of light um, that, uh, that it's spinning. And what happens is that kind of opens up uh, a, uh, a vacuum in the center. Now, there's, uh, there's a lot of speculation uh, available here because the 19th century didn't, uh, physics did not continue uh, beyond Einstein, but the idea uh, was kind of you've got a, uh, a, a collapsing and expanding uh, type of uh, vortex construct. Now, here's the thing. The idea that um, matter and energy are constant, you can see it's still here. In other words, the, the rotation, the spin that is in an atom is its energy. If it's traveling, if you've got a little vortex that's traveling nearly the speed of light, basically what you have is a lot of motion trapped in one little area. And uh, in addition to that, there is um, the idea of wave-particle duality. Now, what is wave-particle duality? I'm not going to get into the modern uh, explanation of wave-particle duality, but I am going to explain how it works in ether physics. And I have a cat toy here to help me. Now, what I mean by wave-particle duality is that a wave... Well, let's see if I can actually do this. A wave can pump a vortex. And you can see, I'm going straight in and out. But the, the ball is going in the circle. What this means is that a wave can pump a vortex, and also vortexes can give off energy as waves. Uh, so in this way, a particle, which is a vortex, can behave somewhat like a wave, but can also still be a particle. And then one of the things that happens in physics, in, our, in the modern day, that we understand, we know, is that uh, waves, like electromagnetic waves coming from the sun, heat, etc., can cause something to heat up. So basically, uh, kind of what's happening there is, uh, we would call it, in modern day physics, we would call it a, an electron transfer or things of that nature. In ether physics, it's basically just an amount of energy waves coming in, speeding up the vortex, and then the vortex slowing back down to its normal, um, 
it's normal play after a short period of time. It basically gives back off that energy that it can no longer store in the form of a wave. So um, going a little further, we're going to talk about the ether equivalent of quantum physics. And that is just the science of the really itty bitty. Now, at this point, you may be wondering why all this detail. The reason for all this detail is because there is um, a tremendous amount of believability in modern physics for these old theories. In other words, they still seem valid. As a matter of fact, there have been articles that have suggested that a, a fluid dynamics model of space-time would uh, be a more accurate and a more accurate model that would provide a lot of answers to uh, to questions. So uh, the reason I'm giving you this information is because it actually has a tremendous amount of uh, uh, believability. It could be a, an alternative view of physics of today, in other words, even with our current understanding. Uh, so still going back on, uh, back to ether theory, um, the Pythagoreans actually uh, had something that they called the music of the spheres, and that was uh, their view of reality was that uh, everything ba was uh, basically harmonic, everything worked off of waves. Now that uh, was further uh, furthered, actually, by Mendeleev. Uh, when he developed a periodic table. Now you hear the word PR, periodic table and you just think of it as a, a label, but what, the, what they mean by periodic is that there are periods. In other words, there are, um, it's something that happens in cycles. In a periodic table, uh, the atomic weight actually dictates how it behaves. And one of the things that Mendeleev found is that uh, that behavior is in octaves. What I mean by this is that Every eight places, it repeats. In other words, uh, if you're, uh, the atomic weight of one atom is eight, places, uh, is eight places from the atomic weight of another atom, they will both behave in a similar fashion, whereas the ones right next to each other won't necessarily behave the same. So this is very much uh, reminiscent of music, uh, because, and it's wave-based. That's why you're constantly hearing in modern physics the idea of waves and particles. and uh, these, these things have been around for a very long time. The Pythagoreans uh, actually may be the ones who created the Antikythera device. You may have heard of the Antikythera device. This is a device that was discovered uh, in the Mediterranean Sea uh, that is uh, very complex gears and, uh, and can, can very accurately predict the motion of the sun, the planets, uh, and is way, way, way beyond its time in its uh, exacting uh, measurements of everything. Now, they believe that this device may have been created by the Pythagoreans. The Pythagoreans may have been a group of people around 2,000 years ago that were very, very ahead of their time with physics. Ahead of their time, perhaps, or perhaps instead, they were looking to ancient knowledge. They were a group of people who had carried forward some, perhaps, some information from the um, uh, the Library of Alexandria, or some sort of ancient knowledge. This is something, once again, to be used in the uh, mythology of steampunk. Um, so, one of the things that we find is atomic interaction can actually be explained as harmonic. In other words, the reason why some uh, atoms may bind to others has to do with the way that they uh, are in harmony or not in harmony. And uh, the, uh, what, one of the things that we'll get into is uh, I'll show you a demonstration of something called cymatics. All right, I uh, will try to give you some links on uh, a good source for looking at cymatics, but there's one particular um, cymatic uh, video that I uh, prefer. It's Water Sound Images. If you look that up on YouTube, you'll find Water Sound Images is an excellent video for um, a single bubble of water. Now, what cymatics shows us is uh, it's the study of waves in fluids. And some of the things that happens is with cymatics, they simply take a fluid, and if they use the right combination of amplitude and frequency for that, the size of that fluid, what they can create are uh, geometric figures. You get octagons, hexagons. Any geometric figure that you like will appear in a cymatic figure. What is interesting about this is these, uh, these figures will, uh, in, in water sound images, one of the things you'll see is a, a bubble of water being in slow motion being uh, compressed and uh, it's basically shaking up and down. And you watch it and you can turn it into, a, it'll, it'll stay an octagon for a while or a hexagon for a while. But what's interesting about it is that um, as you create these uh, octagons and hexagons and uh, et cetera, the, um, with the shape of it, one of the things that you'll notice 
is he has a has the particles in the in the water, and so you've got these little vortices that appear inside the main thing. In other words, the the main um, the main bubble itself is a toroidal vortex, so the water is going out and spreading out and coming back, and not going spreading out and coming back, and then it's also spinning around in this direction, and then there are little points at which there are vortexes going in and around like a uh, like a Celtic figure through the, uh, the cymatic figure. So um, one of the things that, that that shows us is that is a model for an atom. In other words, if we look at a hexagon, it's going to have six small vortices in the, uh, the hexagon. And uh, this would be uh, an analogy to uh, probably a carbon atom. And these smaller vortices uh, within the larger vortex could be uh, referred to as electrons. And the way that these well, smaller vortexes interact with uh, other atoms, well, you have a very complex figure, and so they're only going to be able to interact in very specific ways. One of the things you'll find in water sound images is that um, one, of the, one of the very first uh, climatic figures he shows is just a very, very, very simple um, a very simple vortex. And what happens in it is when he puts some particles in it, what you'll find is the particles inside this one that has basically two waves, one going away, one coming in from the, uh, the middle, coming out from the middle, and one coming in from the other side, and they're passing each other. And so these two, you only have two waves inside this one circle. And in addition to that, the particles flow in that, the, uh, that figure like this. And uh, in addition, you also see, uh, and, uh, if, you have to, if you'll, you'll imagine this in three dimensions, you'll watch the particles kind of spin here and spin here. And so what you have here is this, uh, this figure eight, this infinity symbol of flow inside what is a toroidal vortex. Now this infinity symbol of, of flow basically could be thought of as a hydrogen atom. In other words, it is two electrons. Uh, and, uh, and what's very, very interesting about this shape right here is this is also referred to as the d orbital in uh, quantum physics. What I mean by d orbital is that there is a, a specific pattern that we know that uh, atoms can bind in. And so we believe that the electrons uh, exist in a very particular place um, or a particular area and uh, you know, in uh, in modern physics, they're they're kind of spooky about when and where it is or whatever. But the point is that they've got this idea that uh, that it has a specific shape. In addition to that, the other orbitals, uh, in other words, the other places where they find atoms in a uh, not atoms, the other places where they find electrons in an atom are uh, you'll you'll look at the other orbitals, and what you'll see are these concentric rings. These concentric rings are very, very much like your cymatic figure. So I recommend you check out Watersound Images. Watch it all the way through. It's very interesting. Uh, he's speaking in German the entire time, so you don't really need sound unless you can speak German.